Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's Heart to Home devotional. Um, I'm going to do a little something different today. Uh, I'm going to give a brief little testimony of how I uh, came to the Lord. When I was a child, um, my parents took us to church faithfully. Um, and we were even family of the year in 1963. So don't do the math on my age. Doesn't, doesn't matter. Anyways, um, but in the early 70s, uh, there was a split in the church and we stopped going. And as an 11-year-old, that was great because then I didn't have to get up early on Sunday and I could watch football and I could do all those things that... Uh, earthly things that I, I like to do. Um, but I was raised um, knowing the Lord and um, never made a commitment, but I was taught. The seed was planted. Um, when I got to be a teenager, I started to veer off a little bit, a lot. Um, and I got involved in all the things that the 70s and 80s had to offer. Um, none of them good. Uh, I thought I was doing okay um, because I had a, a relative that was addicted to heroin and I figured as long as I wasn't putting needles in my arms, I didn't have a problem. Well, long story short, I had a problem. Um, I was losing weight, I was staying up all night, I was, you know, just doing all the things I shouldn't do. And the, the things, the thing that later on in life got to me, um, spoke to me about sin's insanity and sin's grip is when I first went to work at a, as a 19 year old for AT&T, I went to work stoned because I wanted them to see this is how I am. So there wouldn't be any questions asked. And that's just crazy. That's how sin grabs you and, and and holds you. And and me saying, you know, I didn't have a problem because I wasn't putting needles in my arms, that's sin. That's justification. And it really um, got to be a, a habit that turned into a lifestyle. And my uh, I went to my boss in early 1988 and said, hey, I have a problem and I'm going to go seek some, some uh, professional help. And he said, that's a good thing you're doing that because I was getting ready to uh, write up a book on, or write up some paperwork on uh, letting you go because uh, you're not dependable. Um, you call in sick too much, you are just not dependable. And, and then God's faithfulness, as I learned later on, this was a gentleman who had an alcohol problem that my mom um, helped get through that. So, you know, it's God's faithfulness that he just used my mom to, to minister to somebody else and who's now who then ministered to me. So I ended up going to a program. Um, it was an outpatient thing and 12 step based. Um, a lot of you people know what 12 steps are. Um, and they always talk about, you know, first first step is admitting you had a problem. Well, that was easy. I had a problem. Um, my marriage was on the rocks, and and uh, I wasn't I wasn't being a good father, and um, but I was lost, uh, and I didn't know what to do. So I started going to these programs, and sitting in these programs, you know, it said that you need to um, seek a God of your own understanding, and I'm thinking, well. You know, the only God I ever knew was the one I learned as a child. Um, and again, God was faithful to see me through all those um, wilderness years, I guess you would call them. Um, there's been plenty of times I probably should have been um, in jail. I should have been, I could have gotten an accident. I could have hurt somebody. Um, I could have hurt my kids. I, it, so many different things. Um, but God was faithful and to see me through because he knew, you know, I didn't know, but he knew. So as time went on, uh, I decided to quit. I'd go into these meetings and they were talking about a God of your own understanding. And then people were talking about 
what the God of their understanding was. And I'm thinking, mm, that doesn't line up to what I, I learned. And uh, so I started listening to Christian radio. And in uh, about 1992, I was in my work truck and uh, listening to a, a Christian radio station. And the guy did an altar call. And uh, he said, pray this pray this prayer and, and uh, you know, God will God will be in your life and then you just commit yourself to him and at the end of the prayer he said you might felt something or you might have felt nothing I felt nothing but it's God works with each and every one of us in a different way and as um, time went on God kept revealing remember the days I saw you through this remember the days I saw you through that I was with you the whole time and um my marriage was healed through the grace of God. Um, I could have ended up out on the street, but I wasn't through the grace of God um, because I knew that uh, it wasn't an addiction thing. It was a sin thing. And we all have sin. And some of us take it in different directions. Some of us use drugs and alcohol. Some of us use gambling. Some of us use food. It, it's not the addiction it's a sin and when I broke it down to that and realized that's what it's all about Satan just wants you to to be separated from God um, I wrote something in my Bible a few years ago it said the outside of heaven is the inside of hell and uh, little tidbits like that I've, I've written in my Bible over the years and it's been it's been a total blessing God's been faithful when I wasn't faithful and, um, and he still is. He is always faithful. And some of the verses I clung on to um, back in the early days of, of being a, becoming a Christian, first one was uh, Romans 12, 2. And it says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. And it, you know, it's like, that's, that's what I had to do. I had, to, I had to quit living in the world. I had to transform my mind. My, my best thoughts and my best actions got me nowhere. It, it got me, luckily I didn't get in a lot of trouble, but spiritually I was, I was in prison. Spiritually I was in prison. But the good thing at God being faithful is all through that time when my girls were little, during Christmas, I had always read in the Christmas story out of the Bible I was given um, at this church that I attended when I was a, a, a child. And one of the other verses that uh, stuck out to me and it kind of woke me up and made me realize that the spiritual battle's on and is 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober, be vigilant meaning be aware because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring roaring lion seeking whom he may devour and that's what sin was doing to me it was devouring me um, and it devours anybody who who just strays away from God and just rejects God and we're we were in in enemies enmity with God and um that's a tough word and we um, we just were away from him. We are separated from him, but he is faithful. And if he's if he has his hand upon you, and uh, just like the prodigal son, you'll come back. And another one, another verse that uh, was kind of my life verse is uh, Philippians four six through eight: Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And, and that's what I needed. I needed something to guard my heart and guard my mind. The job I had, I was in and out of people's houses all the time. Um, and during the, the party years, people would offer me stuff. And it's like, yeah, sure, I don't, I don't I'd do this. But... Um, when I decided to stop, when I let God enter my life, the very first year of my sobriety, 
In all the houses I was in, nobody offered me anything. God was faithful. When I said, Lord, I, I, I just want to stop this. I want to draw closer to you. He was faithful to guard me from um, temptation and from uh, exposure. And uh, it, it was just, as they look back, it was just amazing. Amazing what God, how patient and how long-suffering he is. And um, the last verse that uh, just cements it all together is, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. And uh, that's what we need. We need Christ to strengthen us, to guide and direct us, to um, keep us on the path that he's, he's chosen for us, not turning to the left or to the right. And, and if we do that, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and uh, welcome us into his loving arms in, in heaven when our time is done here on earth. Uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your love and care for us. Um, even when we were separated from you, Lord, it's not what you wanted. You always want us to repent of our sins and uh, you'll forgive us of our sins when we do. And you want all to come to repentance. But Lord, um, we just ask that you continue to guide and direct, and we thank you for your faithfulness. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks again for watching, and have a great day.